one of the things we've been excited about that there's been a lot of publicity recently is transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And all it is is the ability to give somebody a new heart valve, but doing it in a manner where you don't have to open the chest or do an open surgery. The equipment is delivered through usually the blood vessels and the leg. And so recently we worked with a patient that had a bioprosthetic mitral valve placed around 14 or 15 years ago and the valve had gotten to the point where it wasn't opening the way it's supposed to. It's called mitral stenosis. And the options that he had were to have a repeat open heart surgery or to use a technology like the TAVR technology, we used it to fix his dysfunctional bioprosthetic mitral valve. The way that um, these patients are worked up, um, all of them have to have a, a CAT scan of their chest, abdomen, and pelvis. They also undergo a cardiac catheterization as well as a transesophageal echocardiogram to make sure that they're a proper candidate. And I said, I certainly hope so because I had my heart, my chest opened up before for my first mitral valve replacement and I would just love to have it done this way if it's at all possible. Uh, in the room, as you know, in addition to having um, Dr. Albuquerque, who's a structural heart disease specialist, and, and Dr. Melvin, who's a heart surgeon, we had a cardiac anesthesiologist, and importantly, we had our partners from Mass General. Uh, Dr. Ignacio Inglesis, who's the director of structural heart disease at Mass General, uh, and has tr tremendous amount of expertise in this particular procedure. As of last week, we have uh, established a relationship between the two institutions uh, in a way that Holy Cross is now formally considered our affiliate, uh, which means that we're going to be sharing uh, programs, we're going to be sharing protocols, uh, expertise. So transcatheter aortic valve as well as mitral valve replacement is performed in our hybrid operating room here at Holy Cross. Uh, it's a unique facility in that it's a, a room with a large size, so we can accommodate all the necessary equipment um, necessary for, for many specialties. It includes cardiac surgery, cardiology, as well as uh, even peripheral vascular disease. As surgeons, we're, we're members of the, what we call the structural heart team. We work as a unit to really um, utilize all the skills that we have within our own subspecialty and bring them to the table to um, critically evaluate the patient's preoperative workup so that we as a team can really come up with the best um, treatment strategy for these patients. For us to fix the mitral valve, we approach the heart from uh, the femoral vein and come into the right side of the heart and, and we get to the mitral valve by going across what's called the inner atrial septum. Dr. Anand uh, is uh, an electrophysiologist and there's a particular portion of the procedure that's called a transeptal puncture. Transeptal puncture is a procedure where we take a needle and we puncture across the intraatrial septum between the right atrium to get into the left atrium. Typically a transeptal puncture requires a lot of experience and being an electrophysiologist we perform transeptal uh, punctures on a uh, frequent basis when we perform atrial fibrillation ablations. Once uh, transeptal puncture is obtained, we go ahead with a small balloon and we perform what we call the septostomy, which is a balloon inflation in the intraatrial septum, okay? We inflate a balloon in order uh, to dilate the septum so it allows the passage of the transcatheroidic valve smoothly. Then the balloon gets removed out of the body and we advance the transcatheroidic valve once the valve has crossed the septum, we have to use a little bit of advanced techniques for the valves to aim down towards the mitral valve so uh, the implantation can become very precisely and very accurate. Precision is key on those procedures and that requires a lot of advanced imaging knowledge and also experience with several uh, implantations of those valves. This patient had a history of an artificial tissue valve in the mitral position which you can appreciate very clearly that not only are the leaflets thicken, but one of the leaflets is fixed and not moving. A post-op follow-up echocardiogram, and we can appreciate the artificial valve here moving and opening quite well. Came in at 6 a.m. on Friday morning and left at 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Just the fact that they opened your chest 
and the recovery time from that opposed to the recovery time from this, it blows my mind. I just, I can't believe how easy it was. It's amazing. I was most impressed when the next day I was able to walk into his room and say, okay, great, we'll see you in a week. And we let him go home the day after the procedure. I think there's a tremendous amount of excitement in our field, structural heart disease, and in medicine in general, with these minimally invasive techniques that allow patients to get the therapy that they need, but allow them to recover more quickly. And hopefully we can continue to offer these types of therapies to, to more and more people in the South Florida region and, uh, and continue to build on the history that we have here of Holy Cross, of, of, of being progressive and helping to bring new technologies, therapies, and clinical trials to the area uh, in the field of cardiovascular disease.